All right, I want y'all to watch what this man says and then I'm gonna explain something that's very key about this PCR test they've been using and how they've been deceiving people based on one tiny important detail of how this test works. It was never about health, it was about control. Bingo. It was never about health. Get tested, get tested and you can have your life back. A test that doesn't even test for COVID-19, a test using Ventacarry Munis that should not be used to test for infectious diseases, but it is. And when they get their false positives that they desire, they use those tests to shut down your towns, shut down your cities, and take away your livelihoods. And with the 45 times amplification that the NHS are currently using on the PCR test, I'm surprised they've not found Lord Lucan and Shergar. He just said they're using a 45 a cycle threshold of 45 times amplification that the NHS 45 times amplification so when I said that I I just kind of chuckled in a massive sigh of frustration and my wife said well, what's going on honey I'm like they're using a cycle threshold of 45 in the NHS in England on COVID tests and she said what's that I don't understand so I'm going to explain to her and you guys what this guy means he just said at the beginning this is not about health this is about control you're using a test that's not even designed to test for COVID-19 it's a PCR test whose inventor Kerry Mullis says should never be used to diagnose disease this is the guy who invented it Kerry Mullis and he says it in this video and several others listen this is not y'all the test should not be used for that for this reason and I'll explain why using what I've got here on my handy dandy notebook which is the stuff I wrote down the last time I tried to record this video and it didn't go <laughs> as smoothly as I wanted to. So what this guy says that's very key is the cycle threshold. So when they take some of your snot, this is your the little swab, they stick 1,000, 525,600 miles up your nose or in your jaw to grab whatever. And some of your saliva, this is your spit, your saliva, your, your, your genetic material that you supply to um, the laboratory. They then take that information and digitize it. Or they take the genetic information in another company, it's traveled across the country or wherever. It's put into the computer, basically. Correct. It's put into the computer. And when it's put into the computer, it's rendered out as letters that describe genetic material and then put into classifications like computing language. So what the PCR test is designed to do is scale up this material, amplify it, make more of it so that hopefully we can identify And how do they make more it. of it? They make more of it by doing a probability math, more or less, by basically amplifying the material like how, say, Photoshop would amplify pixels on a screen. If you start with a very tiny image, a four pixel image, one, two, three, four, and you say, Photoshop, make this twice as big, 200%. Photoshop has to go, okay, so I've only got brown, green, gray, and beige to work with. So let's make this new pixel beigeish, grayish, and brownish, greenish, and right. It just knows how to infer from what has been supplied this four-pixel image, new pixels to represent a much clearer, theoretically, image. It's like the concept of CSI saying enhance, and it just it gets clear. That's television. That does not work like that in real life. And any person who works in Photoshop for a living will tell you that. <laughs> You can take a 4K, very high resolution, crisp HD image and remove information from it to make it smaller, and that's fine. But And it will still be clear. And it will still be clear, but taking around. a tiny image, taking an old Winamp real one player, real player video from 2001 <laughs> and magnifying it to a 4K HD is not going to make it any clearer. But that's what they've been doing with your genetic material using this PCR test. And what they're doing is they're amplifying the tiny old school VHS footage so high up that the upscaling algorithm has to assume the information is there. And they're more or less alleging that that assumption is ironclad enough to know whether you have COVID or not. And all the people who know anything about how this test works will tell you that that is not necessarily true if your cycle threshold, CT, cycles, amplification processes are above a number that's 
more or less agreed upon as 35. I can't say agreed upon, but the number 35 has been floated out there by several sources as saying anything above a CT of 35 will pretty much yield a 90 to 99 percent false positive rate, meaning it has taken these letters and it has amplified them so many times looking for the COVID genetic sequence that is TGT. I'm just paraphrasing here. T T G T A C G T T T T T A T right T G C. That's what it is. No, I'm just making this up. Oh, okay. I don't know what it is. They don't. That's the irony. It hasn't been purified yet. It's, they claim it's been isolated with air quotes as much as I can make them, but it's never been purified. Which, if you know anything about molecular chemistry is the baseline of total isolation or total isolate to know exactly what you're dealing with an intact genetic sequence has to be purified it's never happened with this novel strain of SARS-CoV-2 as so what I've read and then you take that and put it into a person and see if they get the same symptoms right there's a whole Koch's postulate a whole series of you know, very well agreed upon scientific method based approaches to know whether you're dealing with something unique that's also virulent or not. And that has not been a complete. There's a lot of things that they skip past with SARS-CoV-2, this novel coronavirus, the virus that leads to the disease they call COVID-19, which magically has the symptoms of almost every other disease like it that they're no longer even testing for, like influenza or common cold. So. Let's say hypothetically that this is the COVID sequence. This bracket right here, from this sequence here to this sequence here. Now, what you supplied is not enough genetic material to match up. So they use this PCR test to amplify this information so that hopefully the amplification gives them enough clarity to see whether this is present in your genetic material, your snot. And if you put that 35 times over or more, right. then you will have that sequence. Right. If you take this to the second power and that creates T, G, A, T, C, T, G, T, A, and then you do that whole block of information to the second power effectively making it to the fourth, then to the eighth, then to the 16th, then to the 32nd, then to the 64th, then to the 128th, it keeps going up and they do that upwards of 45 times <laughs> in England. And then they say, oh, you tested positive. When everybody says that 35 times is so high that you can't really rely on it and by 37 to 40, you're pretty much in false positive range guaranteed as well. And this is what I've been told is the American average for the cycle threshold. So understanding about your cycle threshold is paramount to knowing whether the test you took or are considering taking is even worth trusting. Since I would say no, because the very guy who invented this test has never trust my test to diagnose illness. And the reason is because this represents just a random piece of snot. You it's just not smart enough to detect what it is that it's it's not well, the sequence that it's looking at. Kind of. You can say it like that. It's not smart enough, but that's because it's not designed to be a psychic test. Right. Like scales, bathroom scales are not designed to be psychic machines. They can't say. They're designed to tell you exactly how many pounds are on top of them. This is my little makeshift bathroom scale. It's not going to say, oh, hi, Jennifer. Well, I'm the futuristic down. ones might, but the ones right. that <laughs> the scale is only designed to know how much weight is on it. It does not know the source of the weight. It might say, well, anything over 100 is considered fat from what we're told by the manufacturer of the scale. What well, does it know 101 or 110 or 130 amounts of people, you know, bricks. And if it's an elephant, it's not fat. It's just that exactly. Exactly. It's not just an elephant's foot, you know. It doesn't have a way of knowing what's the source of the supplied weight. The PCR test is great at telling you the amount of theoretical of stuff. this exists in your body, but it doesn't know if this was part of a big enough sequence to actually be a deadly thing or just a cold from three years ago or COVID that you caught from your coworker, it doesn't know. And so all they're using is the lack of, 
the, the manipulatability of the public based on their lack of, of understanding of how this test actually works. I explain that this, anytime you see this symbol or just this PCR test for short, the reverse transcriptase quantitative polymerase chain reaction test is a very fancy title just describing a series of processes, what the test is designed to do, but what it's not designed to do according to the guy who invented it is to diagnose disease. So I'm going to play just a minute of this and I want you to see why what he's saying here is the same thing I'm explaining earlier. Anything above this, you're inferring by, by saying, oh, we, you, you got a positive match and we happen to be using a cycle threshold of 37. You're basically saying, even though there's a 90% chance this is just making up letters that we think out of, those out of, the, out of these letters, we've, we're, not, we're 0.1% sure that this truly exists in this. So, but we're not going to tell you that. We're just going to use this information to go on TV and say, 37 new cases, a spike in cases. More people testing, 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 testing. Only so they can pull this ruse on you because so, you don't understand how this works. And neither have I. Ne neither did I. And then they can lock people in their homes and change society and break down the structure of this world over something that we don't really even know anybody who's su suffering from this long Turn. And you have a 99% chance of surviving it, even if you do catch it. So I'm going to play this clip. Check it. In a thousand to one in ten, one in five, little of what they call a thousand T cells. It, and it, it is. Now, there, that, there, there's very little of what they call HIV. And what's been brought out here by Phil Pott and, and, and Isai already, it, it, the measurement for it is not is not exact at all it's not it's not as good as our measurement for things like apples an apple is an apple you know you can get something that's kind of like if you got enough things that look kind of like an apple and you stick them all together you might think of it as an apple but and, and hfv is like that those tests are all based on things that are invisible and they are the results are inferred in a sense pcr is separate from that it's just a process that's used to make a whole lot of something out of something that's what also, it is and it's, it's not it doesn't tell you that you're sick and it doesn't tell you that the thing you ended up with really was going to hurt you or anything like that. That's what it's not. So even if you believe in H. Okay. It doesn't tell you that you're sick and it doesn't tell you that the thing you ended up with was really anything that could get you sick or anything worth being concerned about. It doesn't tell you anything about that because it's not designed to do what it's being used to do. You sick. show how it looks on a right. little... This is a diagram or whatever you want to call it. This is just a clip. This is unrelated. This is this video is really good, but it's not connected directly to what we're saying. But this is just a readout of a genetic sequence of SARS-CoV-2 from that was identified either late 2019 or early January this year. So what hypothetically speaking, what you supplied is this block, block one through block 20. That was the snot that came just this part right here. Just this little bit. Snot. Uh, However, what the test did was, based on these letters, assume all the rest of this data and then look for a block that was three or four letters long because they're still assuming what the full genetic sequence of SARS-CoV-2 even is. They have not purified this. So they're projecting in, they're using models and, well, we know that this related, you know, through, we got, we got this far so we can infer that the rest of this rela relates to this novel coronavirus. And the chances, the more times they cycle it up, they go from this to this, to this, to this, to this, to this, to this, the higher your chance of saying, oh, there goes what we were looking for. You got COVID, quarantine, stay home, now it's on your record forever. So the other thing that I wanna point out is that this sequence here, whatever this initial thing that we grant, you know, the snot that actually came from the boogers in your nose, Whatever that was comprised of might have just been the remnant of nothing. It might have been something that was in it's a flu the shot of yours like last year or three or four years ago. It might have been something from a cold you had, you know, two, three, four, five years ago or months ago. It might have been part of a novel coronavirus that may or may not exist. However, part of that strand is there. But was it enough to actually make you sick? We don't really know. 
And they don't have a way of knowing that. They just have a way of inferring things and then inventing a term called an asymptomatic carrier. Somebody who's so sick, they don't even feel like they're sick, which is like a precedent never before crossed in terms of historical record when it comes to driving a pandemic based off asymptomatic individuals. Fauci himself, again, I don't like this guy, but himself saying it, we find that asymptomatic carriers don't drive pandemics. Yet, that is what's driving the pandemic. It's like they're saying one thing and they're doing another thing. And the thing that they're doing is lying to you. They're lying to you based on the manipulation of what is called your cycle threshold. And it's when they want to create a positive test, they ramp this number above 35. And when they want to create a negative test, they make sure it stays it. below it. You know, on the off chance that you test positive and it was below 35, chances are you might have actually so have something. So they can just do a random <laughs> and you probably, cycle. Right, exactly. And you probably felt bad, which is how you know you had something. You were sick with something. But, you know, boost your immune system. Get some elderberry. Like, there's a zillion ways to actually fight viruses. And also, like, get rid of anything toxic in, in your, your house. house. Yeah, get all your carcinogens. There's, there's all kinds of things that they're not talking about that would actually make you healthy. Trusting this test to tell you what they're trying to, you know, di diagnose with it is as foolish as doing the opposite what the inventor of the test said to use his own tests for. So maybe you, maybe I am, okay, oh, who is this guy online? He's not a scientist, no. But anybody can read and research this stuff. I'm not a brainiac, I'm not a genius. I'm, I can explain it, I guess, but it's not hard. I spent most of my summer not glued to the idea that we were gonna get through this if we just do what we're told, but knowing that this is a, we have a precedent of being lied to about this type of stuff. And now the baby's waking up, so we gotta end this video. Just don't trust them. Get your cycle threshold if you can. Find out what your CT number is if you have to take a COVID test for your work. Find out what's this, what the, the cycle, cycle threshold, threshold is or the CT count that they're using for the test that you're supplying. And see what you get. The president of Tanzania swabbed a papaya, basically a pawpaw, and it tested positive. So don't blindly trust people that tell you that they have your best interests at heart from a government down, top down, pharmaceutical down, only something to gain if you're sick point of standpoint. <laughs> if they're telling you they're trying to help you and they only make money when you're sick, they're probably lying to you.